KDB Plus is widely renowned as one of the fastest databases in the world and as a result it's used by a lot of high frequency trading firms but it does come with one twist and that is that you have to use a completely new language. The language is known as Q. In this video I'm going to break down exactly how you can install KDB Plus, get started with Q and the basic data types, learn how to create a table, insert data and finally query that data. So without further ado let's get started. So in order to install this, you can come over to here, click start a free trial, and you can actually get access to the personal edition. And what they'll do is they'll email you this email over and you can just choose which one you want to select. So for me, I'm working on Mac. I can come here, click on this, and immediately it will start downloading it for me. Okay, so I can then come over here, find where this is in my downloads, unzip it, and I can just place it wherever I want it. Okay, now if we open this up, you'll see immediately under M64, we've just got a Q file and a Q.k file. Now, final missing piece that a lot of people miss is that you actually need a license as well. So if you come down to the bottom of the email, you'll see click link here to download your license file. So you're going to select on this and it will also download your license. So if we come in and we get this license file, we just need to make sure that it's in the exact same folder. Okay, so I come into here into M64 and you'll see now we should have a KC file here, k.q and a Q inside here. What I like to do is just take this Q for executable file and put it in the same place. That means now we have this empty folder and we can delete this. Now, optionally, you can add this to your path um, or alternatively, you can just make sure when you're using Q, you're working inside this folder, okay? So now we can go ahead and immediately start working with some basic data types. So if I spin up a terminal here, head over to a specific folder and I can say make directory ADP tutorial reveal cd into that and then we can open up cursor or VS code whatever your preferred um, editor is Okay, so to start off with some basic data types, what we can immediately do is we can just create a Q file. So we'll just call this um, stocks.q. And you'll notice that it recognizes a Q file. You can just download the extension in the extensions. You can here search for Q if you're working with VS Code or Cursor, and you'll be able to install this for some Q language support. Now, going back to it, let's look at the basics. So we've got, for example, we can say show 42 or 41, and this is an integer. We can say show 43.6, and this is going to be a float. And if we just run this file, okay. There we go. So we can see here we've got 41 and 43.6. Now, one of the benefits of dealing with KDB Plus is that they actually have some optimization specifically for trading application. So if we look here, we've got show hello string, but we can actually do something that's a bit more efficient. So we can say show dash hello, and this is actually gonna be something called a symbol. Okay, now if we just run this here, you'll see a slight difference in the way it's printed. And the reason for this is that it will only ever store hello in memory once, okay? So let's say for example, we're dealing with loads of stock price data for Apple, and we constantly wanna be having the symbol of Apple. Well, each time you create a new string, there's a new instance of that stored in the memory. Working with symbols, KDB Plus allows you to only store that once and it can reference it throughout the uh, throughout the database. So that's one benefit. So we've got numbers over here, we've got strings, what else do we wanna see? So obviously for important for time series data, we were gonna to wanna to know how to work with dates. So if we do show.z.p, and what this is gonna show us is a, I think this by default is a timestamp object. So if we run this, you can see it's a timestamp up to the nanosecond. So this is obviously going to be super, super important for when we're dealing with stuff like uh, tick data in uh, when creating trading applications. Some other basic data types that we can work with. 
So we can have a list. So if we say show one, two, three, four, this is actually just going to be a list. We can also look at dictionary. So to show a dictionary, we can do use again this symbol. So we can say A symbol, B symbol, and then we can use the exclamation mark one, two, and this will show us a dictionary. So there you can see we have a dictionary. OK, so now we've got our basic data types. We can just um, get rid of all of this and we can actually look at how to create a table. So we can define a table like the following. OK, so we can open it up and there are two different types of tables in. Uh, I should really turn AI off when I do these tutorials. It's really frustrating for you guys. So there are two different types of tables. So we have keyed tables where in here we'd add in a key. And so like the key can be any type of data that you want. But when you're working with time series data, you want to use an unkeyed table. So we'd leave these square brackets empty. Oh God. And we just come in here and we can say, uh, the first thing we want, let's say, for example, is gonna be a timestamp. And that is gonna be of type time. Did they use the type system for timestamp? Yeah, so it's gonna be of type timestamp. And then we can just cast that here, like follows. And then we can just do the same thing for everything else we want. So we want a symbol and a price and a float. We don't really want a size because we're not making trades. And this should give us a table. OK, so if we just come down below and we say show table and we run this. You can see we've got a basic table here and it's unkeyed. If I was, for example, to wrap the timestamp in these square brackets. And then run this you will see it appears slightly different as the timestamp acts as the key. However, we do not want that because this is so fast that in some instances you might actually have data coming in in the same nanosecond. So this is the basics of creating a table in KDB+. Okay, so now that we've got a basic table, what we might wanna do is insert some data. So if we come above here, we can say tab, insert, open up some brackets and put in whatever we want. So for here, we can use this .z.p, which is just gonna give us a timestamp. We can give it a symbol like Apple, and then we can give it a price like 170.54, okay? And if we just run this now, we should have one piece of data in the table. And there we go, okay. So now we might wanna just do a load of these, AI is going to help us here. Do a couple more. That's it. There we go. Oh, we don't want all of them. Let's do 180. Let's do 190. Let's do 75. Okay. And if we run this, we should have a bit more data. Okay, great. So we can see all this data has been added to our table. Okay, so now that we've learned how to insert data into the table, how can we start querying it? And this is where people get worried because I don't want to have to use the Q language, but really it's not too dissimilar from SQL. Okay, so we're going to use the show statement again, and we're going to say show select, very similar to SQL, from tab where, and we're just going to say where simb, do we call it simb or sim? Sim equals MSFT. And this should only give us the prices of Microsoft. So if we run this, and there's been an error. Ah. That's the error. Ah, okay. So here, okay just to show you guys what I've just done wrong here. So if we look above, this is when you define a variable. So you're declaring something. I've done that stupidly here. This is actually should always be an equal size. So we're saying where symbol equals this. And now we have where it's only Microsoft. If we wanted to change this to, for example, Apple, and we run this again, and we get all the Apple prices. We can also use basic stuff. So we can say, for example, so we called it here price. So we can say where price, is less than 195, for example. And if we run this, we should only get the data that's less than 195 in the table. Okay, and there you have it. So that's the basics of querying in KDB+.
Okay guys, and there you have it, a very brief introduction to KDB+. Hopefully you can see it's not that intimidating. And if you wanna advance your database skills even more, I recommend watching this video here, which is all about how to use TimescaleDB for time series data. Cheers.